Let's look at working a truth table for a longer proposition when it's already been translated. This is exercise 6.3, Roman numeral one. The instructions say use truth tables to determine whether the following symbolized statements are tautologous, meaning if they're all true, self-contradictory, meaning they're entirely false, or contingent, meaning your answer, like our previous example, was a combination of trues and falses. So let's do one very easy one. Let's do number one. So if I had n implies, n implies n, I would first start off with my formula. So the number of lines equals two, two. Well, there's only one line because it's one letter. So I would say two times one is two. So my number of lines is just two. I divide my number of lines by two so two divided by two is one. One true and one false under all of these. Then what I would do, because I carried them over because they're all the same letter, then what I would do is use the rules that I have for my operators to compare these columns. And again, I would do what's inside the parentheses first and then what's outside the parentheses. And the main operator in this case, just in case you're curious, is the horseshoe, which means it's the last operator that will work. Um, you would, If you had brackets, you would do brackets first. I'll show you, show you an example of that as well. So we know that the rule with the horseshoe is that it's only false if it's true, then false. So if I'm looking only at what's in this set of parentheses. Is there any place where it's true than false? No. I'm done with these lines. I'm now gonna compare what's under the horseshoe to the end column. Is there any place where it's true than false? No, it's true than true, false than true. So I'm done with these. This is my answer. And in fact, it is tautologous. I'm just showing you that as an example. I don't expect you to know what tautologous, self-contradictory, um, or contingent mean. We won't really use those. Let's look at one that's a little more complicated. Let's look at um, number 11, which doesn't have the answer in the back of your book and looks pretty scary to begin with. Um, it's open brackets, open parentheses, Q implies P and not Q implies R, closed brackets, and not P or R. This is a good example. Um, in the first example, it was easy to see because we were only using one letter and only one operator. Here, there are multiple operators and a lot of things to consider. The first thing that we want to remember is to, again, work what's in the parentheses first, then what's in the brackets, and then everything else. It's also too important, important to remember that the tilde cannot be distributed like it is in math. In other words, not P or not R, it, it doesn't get distributed that way. What you do is you work what's inside the parentheses and then apply the tilde to what's directly after that. I'll remind you of that when we get there. So let's do the setup for this argument. If we do L equals two to the N and use our formula, then we need to count for our N the number of different letters. So I've got Q, P, and R. I've only got three different letters. So two times two is four times two is eight. So, what we've got is eight lines. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I divide my number of lines in half for the number of trues and falses under my first letter from the left that's not repeated. So eight divided by two is four. That means I'm going to put four trues and four falses. Now my next different letter from the left is going to be four divided by two, which is 
2. So under P, I'm going to which is my next different letter from the left, I'm going to have two trues and two falses all the way down. And I'm being careful again to put these values in my setup under the letters and not under the operators. Now, 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's the number of trues and falses for my third different letter or my last different letter from the left, which is not Q. The next different letter from the left is R. So I'm going to put one true and one false all the way down. Now what I can do, now that I have these initial values, I can now carry those values over to the rest of the letters. So if my Q was one, two, three, four trues and four falses, I can put those there as well, four trues and four falses. Anywhere I see a P can be two trues and two falses. And anywhere I see an R can be one true and one false. So now my truth table is set up for me to then apply the operators. Then again, I just have to remember my order of operations inside the parentheses, then the brackets, etc. And I always want to do the tilde first if I can because I want to look at wherever there is a tilde in front of one thing. So I'm going to work the tilde Q first. If Q is true, the tilde will make it false. If Q is false, the tilde will make it true. So under the tilde, I'm going to put false, 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 true, 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 true. Now, now I can work what's in each one of these parentheses. So I'll just start from the left. Uh, you don't have to, but you want to work what's in the brackets first, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the horseshoe operator. Uh, again, the rule for the horseshoe is it's only false if it's true, then false, or true on the left and false on the right. So I want to look down every line. This is line one, line two, line three, etc. Are there places where there is a true, then false? Just looking at this Q and this P column. True, 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 true. There's one, true, false. There's another. The rest begin with false, so I don't have any more that are false. The rest must be true. See how much quicker that is than trying to figure out how the actual tables work instead of how the rules work. So I have my answer for inside this set of parentheses. Then what I want to do is I've already worked not Q. This is one term, not Q. So I want to compare not Q, or the column under the tilde, with R using the horseshoe. So again, I'm looking for any line where it's true, then false. And I find it on line one, two, three, four, five, six. And I find it on line eight. There are no other places where it's true, then false. So the rest must be true. Again, now I'm done with this column and I'm done with this column. It allows my eye to see a little better what I'm working with. And I want to finish out what's in the brackets. So now I'm comparing this column that I've put the double lines under and this column that I've put the double lines under, but using now the dot. Now remember the rule for the dot is that it's only true if they're both true. So I'm going to look at these two columns under my answers in the parentheses to see where there are places that are both true. So I've got true and true here, true and true, false, true, false, true. Here's another true and true, true, false, true, 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 false. So the rest will be false by process of elimination. I'm done with this column and I'm done with this column. This is my answer for inside of the brackets, or the answer for the brackets. Again, you can use these little double lines and circle, or use different colors, or whatever it is that helps you to see where your work is. Now, let's move over to this side of the argument. This argument here, P or R, I know I need to work what's in the parentheses first and then apply the tilde before I can then compare that column to the column under the dot here. 
In this case, this dot is the main operator because it governs everything on this side and it governs everything on this side. So it will be the one that we work last. The rule for the wedge is that it's only false if they're both false. So I'm going to use this rule to find those places in these two columns. There are only two of them that I see where it's false and false. The rest are true. I'm going to cross these out. And this is what I'm using, but I'm not done. This tilde needs to be applied to the answer of what's in these parentheses. This is the answer. So I'm gonna negate it with this tilde. Wherever it's true, I'm gonna say that it's false. And wherever it's false, I'm gonna say that it's true. So this I'm done with, and now I'm going to use this column which is the answer for the right side of the problem, and this column, which is the answer from inside the brackets or the left side of the problem, I'm gonna compare those two using my main operator, the dot. Again, the rule with the dot is it's only true if they're both true, so I'm gonna look at each line and say, is there a place where they're both true? There is not, so they're entirely false. Now, I will tell you, these are examples that they're giving you to show you and that, that's actually your answer, that it's all false, to show you that something can be entirely all true or entirely all false, tautologous or self-contradictory. What that really means in evaluating arguments is that if it's tautologous, then any combination of truth values for this proposition would make the proposition true. It wouldn't matter what you did. Um, same here. This proposition, if Q was true or false, if P was true or false, if uh, any, you know, you can read each line like that. This Q is true. This P is true. This Q is true. This R is true. If everything was true, it doesn't matter. This proposition, the way that it's set up, will always be false. Usually we'll see ones that are contingent, but that's how you work a shorter and a longer truth table for propositions.